Hello guys and welcome to Watch Crew. Watch collectors have always been drawn to luxury timepieces for their exquisite craftsmanship and enduring charm. Omega is one of the most celebrated watchmakers in the world, known for its exceptional quality and timeless sophistication. This review will guide watch enthusiasts in selecting top-shelf Omega watches for men in 2023 by analyzing their unique features, design aesthetics, and craftsmanship. The Omega Speedmaster Dark Sign of the Moon Apollo 8 is a special and limited edition timepiece that pays homage to NASA's historic Apollo 8 mission, which was the first manned mission to orbit the moon. This watch is celebrated for its unique design, connection to space exploration, and use of innovative materials. Apollo 8 is almost cool enough to make me forget that we're here to talk about a watch. With the Moon Watch Apollo 8, Omega started with the dark side of the moon we already know, so the case is full black ceramic and 44.25 mm wide. While certainly a wide case size, the 12 mm thickness of this hand wound model is well matched by a lug to lug length of 49 mm, making the Apollo 8 big, but entirely wearable on my 7 inch wrist. Where the case is shared across the dark side of the moon family, the dial and movement are what set the Apollo 8 apart from its siblings. The Apollo 8 has a semi-skeletonized dial that carries a laser illustration of the moon's surface along with an open view of a portion of the chronograph movement underneath. Flip the watch over and you're treated to an unexpected view. A wide sapphire-covered display case back highlights the Apollo 8's use of Omega's Caliber 1861 hand wound chronograph movement. With bridges finished to match the lunar-like details of the dial, this 1861 is a mix of dark textures, purple jewels, and the varied bright work of metal cams and wheels. In conclusion, the Omega Speedmaster Dark Side of the Moon Apollo 8 is a remarkable timepiece that celebrates a pivotal moment in space history. The Omega Speedmaster Super Racing has a seemingly intimidating case diameter measurement of 44.25 mm, but its 50mm lug-to-lug span across the wrist is feasible for most to wear safely. In typical Speedmaster fashion, you have twisted liar lugs mirror polished on the outer shoulders with the inner sloped facet and outer flat case flank facet richly brushed. As a racing chronograph, it has a moorland suited 50 meters of water resistance for the 14.9mm thick case. So, while it can take a surface swim, so long as you do not engage the chronograph pushers underwater, I would still advise opting for a diver or more water-resistant watch in that scenario. If you are a bracelet fiend like myself, you will be glad to know the Omega Speedmaster Super Racing is outfitted on the same Rollblink bracelet as the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch 3861. The main source of intrigue in regard to this offering is the newly debuting Automatic Master Coaxial Caliber 9920, Omega's first caliber to utilize the new spare aid system. The spare aid system's inclusion means this coaxial column wheel chronograph caliber is regulated to leave the factory running on average between 0 to plus 2 seconds per day, an astounding level of accuracy, as we have seen in previous calibers. Is this my favorite Speedmaster ever made? Not particularly. For my personal taste, the innovation inside is more alluring than the watch itself. That being said, the Omega Speedmaster Super Racing is an objectively good-looking watch so long as you do not have an aversion to yellow accents. The Seamaster Railmaster not too little, not too large. 40mm is pretty much perfect for this style of watch, but that's not all that stands out. The case is pretty much identical in form to the Aquaterra, except for the finishing. While the AT is all about polished lines and reflected light, the Railmaster is muted and matte, thanks to its satin brushed finish, something that totally fits with the model's utilitarian origin story. The crown is conical and easy to use and the lugs are that sweeping twisted style that is such a hallmark of Omega. The case is rated to 150 meters and doesn't sit too high, clocking in at around 12 mm. The case back is solid, engraved with everyone's favorite mythological creature, the hippocampus. The first thing you're likely to notice about the Seamaster Railmaster is the dial for the simple reason that it is, as they say, a corker. The brushed metal base gives it a really distinct look, in both the black and gray dial variants. Simple but interesting. Then there's the arrowhead vintage tone blue markers. The paint isn't applied on top of the dial, but rather recessed into it, giving the watch a neater look. Modern Omega movements are some of the best in a business, hands down. 
the accuracy and rigorous testing that their master chronometer movements are held accountable to is impressive, to say the least, and a Cal 8806 is no exception. It's a bit of a shame the movement is hidden away, but a solid caseback is much more fitting with the ethos of the Railmaster. For me, the Seamaster Railmaster hits the sweet spot between vintage style and modern construction and manages to do so with style. So if you like your old stuff and your new stuff, you'll likely be into this watch. Daniel Craig and the No Time to Die filmmakers actively collaborated in defining the specifications of this Seamaster Diver 300M7 edition. In particular, the actor suggested some vintage touches and colors, while also recommending to use titanium for case and bracelet as a lightweight watch would be a plus for a military man like Seven. Omega used grade 2 titanium, which is pure titanium differently from grade 5 titanium, which is an alloy combining titanium, aluminium and vanadium. The case is 42 mm in diameter and 13 mm thick, slightly slimmer than the standard Seamaster Diver 300M models thanks to a new doming of the scratch-resistant sapphire crystal glass with anti-reflective treatment inside. The screw-down crown, protected by robust guards, and the helium valve positioned on the case band at 10 o'clock, contribute to make the watch water-resistant up to a pressure of 30 bar. Characterized by a conical shape, the helium valve makes uses of an Omega patented technology that allows it to be operated underwater. The movement of choice is the automatic master chronometer caliber 8,806 beating at a frequency of 25,200 vibrations per hour with an autonomy of 55 hours. It features a free sprung balance with silicon balance spring and it can resist to magnetic fields reaching 15,000 gauss. In conclusion, the Omega Seamaster Diver 300 M7 Edition is a timepiece that combines a unique design inspired by the world of James Bond with the precision and reliability of Omega watchmaking. The Omega Seamaster Poprov 1200m is a legendary and highly specialized diver's watch designed for professional underwater use. The old original Poprov is 54mm wide and 45mm long, the new one is 55 mm wide and 48 mm long. The longer case helps frame the frame and connect a little better. There is a lot of steel in the case, and this is not a lightweight watch. This weight rises on the metal mesh bracelet. It doesn't bother me, but some will find wearing the watch a workout. We all need more exercise, though. Despite its strange appearance, it is very comfortable. Inside of each Omega Seamaster Ploprof 1200 meter watches, is an in-house Omega-made caliber 8,500 automatic coaxial escapement chronometer movement. The original Ploprof also contained an in-house-made Omega movement called the caliber 1002 automatic. The 8,500 is a pretty good movement. It has a power reserve of 60 hours and is one of the first very modern in-house Omega movements. In conclusion, the Omega Seamaster Ploprof 1200 meter is a true tool watch built for professional divers who demand the highest level of performance and durability. Its unique design, extreme water resistance, and robust movement make it a reliable choice for those who require a watch capable of withstanding the harshest underwater conditions. While it may be overkill for everyday wear, it remains an iconic and respected diver's watch in the world of horology.